Hey, this is Trish with Peregrine Designs. I wanted to show you how to make a real nice phone stand. There are a lot of great videos out there that, that are super at doing a phone stand, but I, this one has a slightly different adaptation that I thought you would enjoy. This design actually makes the roll fabric, this fabric, a separate piece and a separate cut so that you can have a little bit of design flexibility where you use two different fabrics. And I thought that that was very nice. Because this is cut separately, this also I can work with directional fabric because this is cut in one direction and this piece is cut in another direction, but I can get directional fabric to work. Another nice design element about this is that if you look at it, there are no visible seam lines to the public. And if your hand stitching is as bad as mine, um, that was a big plus. So where is your stitching? Where's your hand stitching? Right on the back. That's where your hand stitching is. So I really liked that idea. And I just wanted to present this because I think this was a nice addendum to what's out there. So let me show you in two seconds what you're going to need. You'll certainly need fabric and a fat quarter works really well for this. I'm going to use this pretty fabric as a fat quarter and you may ask, well, what is a fat quarter? A fat quarter is a quarter yard of fabric, but it's cut on a fatter basis. Instead of being very narrow, nine inches by 44 inches, it's cut 18 inches by only about 22 long. So it's a, just a fatter cut of a quarter yard of fabric. That works very well. I'm also going to put this one, I think, is the roll, just so that I can demonstrate how you can work this as two different fabrics. You will need shape flex, but not very much. It's really little, eighth of a yard, quarter yard. I use a lot of shape flex. Shape flex is a Pellon product, and here it is right there. It's called SF101. You find it all over. Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Amazon, and um, it is, you're going to use it on the seam allowances because I want to stabilize those. You don't need much, but that's, it comes in white and black. My recommendation is go for white. You will need polyfill for the stuffing. This is polyfill. It's just wadding, and you can find this again all over the place. Heavyweight poly beads. This is what I found on Amazon. I'm sorry, I don't have the original container, but these are heavier weight poly beads. You can use rice and you can use beans, although I didn't like beans. I thought they were too bulky and I didn't like the way they felt. But this is a heavyweight poly beads that I found on Amazon, and this actually works well. I don't need a ton of these, but the reason why I tend to want to use the poly beads is because if you use rice or beans and let's say you want to wash this thing, yeah, that's not going to work out real well. That rice is going to get kind of gamey. So heavyweight poly beads on Amazon. Stitch witchery. A very small amount of this, completely optional. But stitch witchery, I use this tons of stitch witchery. What it is, is it's a glue that's been webbed and dried. And when you put this piece, this strip between two pieces of fabric and put a hot steamy iron to it, it'll fuse your fabric together. So this stuff I use like crazy. I have this all the time. Half inch cardboard. The reason why is because on here, where am I? Here I am. Right here, I put a little bit of spacer here so that your phone can sit right here. And about a half inch is about right. This is a little larger than a half, and I don't think it needs to be that big. Um, so you can use cardboard. I never anticipate washing these, but if you were going to wash them and you wanted to make them washable, then this works pretty well. This is called, it's a Pellon product. This is called Peltex Ultra Firm Fusible. And it really is heavyweight. You, it's kind of akin to what you would see in the brim of a baseball hat. So it's very heavyweight, but it's called Peltex. Sometimes it's called Timtex. Maybe the Peltex has got the fusible. So you don't need very much of it. But because I never anticipate really washing these, a little half inch strip of cardboard works well. Hand needle and thread, make the thread the color of your fashion fabric. And a marking pen. You can use um, a chalk liner, it's fine. These are real nice, these are friction. Uh, I bought these on Amazon. If you come at it with a hot iron, um, it, the marks go away. And, or you can use a chalk liner or something, a pencil, something like that that you can realistically get out. So this works well and you only need just, just need a little bit of it. Okay, and I think that's what you need. So now let me go ahead and cut your fabric. Okay, I've gone ahead and cut my fabrics and let me show you how to cut them. 
Cutting from scratch is painful because you're constantly having to measure and remeasure. What I end up doing is I make a template. And this is another piece that's completely optional, but this piece right here, this white piece right here, is another Pellon product and it's called, if I'm not mistaken, it's called True Grid, but it has blue grids in it. It's not fusible, but it's kind of got a sturdy hand. And I use this a lot when I do my pattern making because I can use it as a pattern and then I just lay it on my fabric and I can cut around it and that works well. I, I also can write obviously all over it and the reason why I did hearts is because to tell me hey if it's if I'm working with directional fabric I want it to be in the north position. I want you to cut your fashion fabric this is the main body I want you to cut it seven inches by 12 inches. Your roll fabric should that be different that is cut seven inches by four inches if you're cutting it different. If you don't have directional fabric and you've got no issues with your fabric, everything is the same, then what you would do is you would cut them both like this and instead of 12 inches long, you'd go 16 inches long and subcut it down four inches to get the roll fabric separate. If the last one is your little bitty, um, piece up here that goes your cords go through that so that is a very small piece this is about three inches long by two inches wide okay then so what I also have done is I've used my shape flex and I've gone ahead and reinforced the wrong sides of my fashion fabric uh, you can cut your shape flex um, half inch, three quarters, an inch, it doesn't matter. I just need to make sure that that seam allowance is well reinforced because it's going to be stuffed. It's going to be, there's a lot of stuffing in here. So I want to make sure that that's very stable. So I reinforced this one. I have reinforced this one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my stitch witchery. This is where it's optional if for the uh, loop at the top. You can also use something really pretty. You could use, um, really pretty elastic uh, that's got, you know, you can use trim, you can use ribbon, all kinds of stuff. So what I'm going to do, but I'm going to use this fabric because I'm going to go ahead and fold it together. This is the three inch here. This is the two inch here. I'm going to fold it together. I'm going to fold it together like this. And then I'm going to fold it down on top of itself. And I'm going to put stitch witchery right in here. And it just clips off. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to go ahead and come like this. Well, if I can show you. Come on now. Come at it with a steamy iron. And that is that. And then go ahead and fold it down. And you can go ahead and crease it one more time. When you cut your shape flex your shape flex has a um it has a nubby texture on one side and a cottony texture on the other you want the nubby texture is the glue so the glue needs to be down on the wrong side of your fashion fabric and now we're going to go ahead and start putting this together this is my 12 inch piece right here this is my main body i'm going to put this together right sides together and I'm going to go ahead and fold it like I have here that you can see. Here is my uh, tube for my cords. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the very top corner here and I can let that, I've given myself a fair amount of excess here, I can let that come out a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and pin that in place. And you can see what I've done here so that you can visually see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and sew a quarter inch all the way around at a tight stitch. Go with about a 2.0 stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and start here, do a little back tacking here, come here, stop, turn down here. And this is about, let's see, how long is this? This was about an inch and a half or so. Um, two inches down from the top and this 
I'm going to leave myself an opening. This opening is one, two, two and a half inch opening. I need a little bit of opening so I can get my fingers in there to push my stuffing in. So I'm going to leave myself an opening and then I'm going to continue sewing all the way down to the bottom. Leave yourself an opening toward the top versus toward the bottom. If you get it too far toward the bottom, you start running into problems where you're starting to impact uh, some of these joins right here. And I'm going to go ahead and sew that. Then I'm going to just sew, this is my uh, roll fabric, put it together right sides together. This is the seven inches this way, this is the four inches this way. Go ahead and put it right sides together and sew a quarter inch down on one side. Don't sew the other side yet. We're going to go ahead and fussy that in to make sure that the better we fussy it, the nicer that lies flush. And so we're going to fussy that in. And so I'll be right back. I finished sewing and it goes without saying, you already understand this, but if this were really directional fabric, then make sure that the direction is going north here. This is the top of your phone stand. This is the top. So I want my hearts going this way. It goes without saying, you already know that. I've gone ahead and sewn everything and given myself a gap. Now I want to go ahead and turn it. And I also want to do a small registration mark. I've gone ahead and just gently pressed it. And what I did was I took a very, very tiny snip out of the corner, just a really tiny snip, because when you flip this, see that tiny snip becomes a very remarkable snip. So just a baby snip. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn it. Some people will say, go ahead and clip this, you know, to reduce bulk or whatever. What I find is on 45 or this kind of a 90 degree angle, what you can do is you do kind of an origami fold. And I'm going to see if I can do this without blowing it. Fold it away. Fold this piece away. Fold the top piece down on the threads. So you have that. Hold it. Hold it. You can see I'm holding it and I'll try to hold it until... I don't hold it. Turn it inside out. Hold it. Continue to hold it. And it takes some practice, but it actually works pretty well. And I use this a lot when I do corners. I don't tend to want to cut my corners, but see how you get this kind of this... Uh, remember when you were a kid, you got these little weird things that you did with paper? What you end up doing is you just gently push that out with your finger, with your fingernail. And what this does is this creates, instead of that fabric becoming very bulky and a big knot in there, that fabric kind of does one of these things. So it's all folded on the inside. You can go ahead, and at this point you can use a, a point turner. You can go ahead and just gently point out and move that point away. But what you end up finding is you can feel it and there's no knot at the end. There's no ball of fabric at the end. These, are, these have been actually at a kind of a nice right angle to each other. So this actually works very well and you don't compromise. Fold it out. Nice thing because we put that, um, see how nicely that pulls out? That because we wedged it right in the corner. So that's nice. I'm gonna go ahead and iron this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up because you're saying, well, how do you get the how do you get the diamond? Or you get that triangle effect. How you get that is you turn it this way. So what I've done, and if you want to, you can go ahead you can see where my sew line is. You can go ahead and open that up if you like. You don't have to, uh, but you can go ahead and open up that seam line to give yourself a visual. It doesn't have to be opened up much. And that's why I did that little tick mark right here. I'm going to put that tick mark down on that seam allowance. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and iron to get it good crease. And I'm going to go ahead and do more tick marks. I'm going to do a very little baby tick mark here. And I'm going to do a baby tick mark right here. Okay. Let's see if that was a big enough tick mark. Yep, big enough. Okay, so that is that piece. Then remember I said, okay, hang fast, stand by on doing the roll. 
This is where you fussy that in. Here is the edge, the leading edge. Here is the original sew line. Now I'm going to connect the dots on the other side. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to go ahead and sew this with a tight stitch. I went ahead and did a tight stitch, and that's still looking like it's going to fit nicely. You can notice that my shape flex, I kind of missed some of my shape flex down here. The most important part for your uh, shape flex is going to be right in here because I want this to be very stable. Not quite so important down here. If you think, uh, I just don't have enough stability on this side piece, you can add another little piece of shape flex in here to give yourself a little bit of stability. I'm going to go ahead and cut this just a little bit because it's just a little bit more than what I need. And I like my pinking shear, so I'll go ahead and cut it with my pinkers. And then I'll turn it... and press it. See if it still fits. Yep. And fabric has a little bit of stretch to it, so that's going to fit nicely. Alrighty, now what we're going to do is we're going to start to apply our um, batting, our inside, our polyfill to this piece right in here. The next step is to add my polyfill to this roll fabric. What I've done is, by using my uh, friction pen, is I'm visually going to tell you what I want you to do is go ahead and sew a very, just not, you know, very narrow, about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to sew here, and I'm going to sew here, and I'm going to leave this part, this center piece open, because again, i got to get my fingers in there. I've sewn this together, but I've given myself an opening, obviously, so I can get my fingers in. But I've sewn it fairly tight in here, and the reason why is because when I go final and apply this to my main body, I will use a much more generous quarter of an inch, and I don't want to see this sew line. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and open this up, and I'll go ahead and start to stuff it. You don't need to stuff it hugely bursting at the seams. Stuff it full, but not bursting. Why? because when I go final, I'm going to even sew even deeper into this by another quarter of an inch, and that's going to push that batting, that's going to put that stuffing even tighter into the, uh, into the roll. I've used my polyfill, my uh, stuffing, and I've gone ahead and stuffed it and kind of worked out, um, you know, filling out the corners and, and such. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do, using a pin, I'll go ahead and now I'm going to go ahead and finish connecting these dots. I'm going to finish sewing from here to here. Remember, the roll just keeps the phone from sliding. I finished sewing and connecting the open space. You're going to need probably smart to go ahead and use a zipper foot. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and apply this to my main body. You can apply it to the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter. You know, this is considered the top with the seam is considered the bottom. It doesn't matter which side. The thing about this is it's only applied to one layer. It doesn't get applied to both layers. It just gets applied to one layer, either top or bottom. You'll put raw edges together like this. And you can use pins Okay, so I just have it just to one of the top or the bottom. You've made your, remember, you made your little tick marks here. This is just so that you know that this roll needs to straddle those tick marks. And what I'm going to go ahead and do, and I'll show you on using a friction pen. Now I'm going to go ahead, once again, I'm going to go ahead and sew this just to this one layer. Not to both, just one. And I'm going to sew again with a narrow, um, narrow seam allowance. Because 
Okay, I've sewn the roll just to one layer. It's completely open on the inside. It's a little bit of a maneuver. Use your zipper foot. And I started sewing, and I wanted to make sure that the tick mark that I made straddles this edge and that edge. This way I'm pretty well guaranteed that it's gonna be a nice flush. Now comes the beauty part, and that is now I'm gonna finish this with a deeper quarter inch. So how do I do that? Turn it inside out. Pull these down. So now it's inside my roll is right in here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna join this free layer to my roll layer. I'm gonna join that. Sometimes it's a lot easier to do this and sew it from this area because you can see your original sew line. And what I will end up doing is I'm going to sew a solid quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna come out, and if you wanna make a mark on it, you can, uh, just to help yourself. just to help guide what you're gonna do. But I'm gonna go ahead, cause that way I will never see that original sew line. Go ahead with a tight stitch, make sure and back stitch in here and here. I've gone ahead and sewn right along that line that I made so that you can visually see that. And it's very clean on this side. So I'm real pleased with how this is gonna look. Go ahead now and pull it all back out to the right side. That's the hard. This was the, that little piece right there is the hardest piece about making one of these things because it little it is a little conceptual. But you only want to do it. You only want to apply it on one layer. If you apply it on both layers, you've you've done it wrong. You pull it, and you should have a very pretty. No fuss, no muss. I don't see any other seam lines. I don't see any other sew lines. And so that looks terrific. Alrighty. Okay. This is where your cardboard comes in. If you decide to use cardboard or, but see how nice that, that's pretty flush. I like that. That's pretty flush. I can live with that. So that looks pretty good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put your cardboard or your Peltex in to give yourself a base for your phone or your tablet. Here's my cardboard piece or Peltex, whatever you like. And I've kind of got that, I've got a little bit of extra on both sides. I might be able to trim that off just slightly, but it generally will work pretty well. I just want to get a foundation here. Put this in from the opening, this opening here. Go ahead and slide it in. And nuzzle it, sorry, nuzzle it up. You can't see it, you can't feel it, but I'm nuzzling it up to this piece right in here. And you can see, see the other creases here? This was a half inch piece. And then let me go ahead and get that situation to nuzzle as tight as I can. And then what I'm gonna do is use my ruler and I'm gonna use my chalk liner, right? And I'm going to make a line here. I'll tend to make the line on the wrong side of the bag. The wrong side or the non-public side is the side where you have your seam allowance. I'll make my line here because that'll be my stitching line. And the reason why is because sometimes, even though you're using a chalk liner, white will generally come off real well. White will wipe away. Sometimes your other colors, they don't wipe away as well. Uh, particularly if you go with the blue or the gray, they may not wipe away at all. You may have to take a little bit of water to them. And so if I'm going to have a problem, I want to have a problem on the wrong side of the bag, not on the front side. I'll go ahead and mark that and I'll show you what I mean. I've nuzzled that right to my seam line right here. And you can kind of see if I fold it, that's where that uh, half inch piece is. And I've made a mark on the wrong side of the bag. I'm going to go ahead and stitch that down along that mark. The reason why the mark is nice is because it gives me a pretty stitch line from the fashion front. Use fashion color. Uh, since this is predominantly orange, I'm going to go with orange in my, particularly orange in my bobbin thread because that's what's going to be shown to the public. 
Okay, that's a really close match. I can barely, I can barely see that fabric or that uh, thread. Do yourself a little bit of back stitching here and do a back stitching here. I don't want uh, this to possibly come open where my poly beads could find their way down into this flat section here. Okay, now the hard parts are over. Now it's the stuffing. What I tend to like to do is another thing that I would tell you that makes it slightly easier. Let me see if I can explain this better. See how this opening is right here? One side of my fabric is in and one side of my fabric is folded. And the reason why that makes it a little bit easier is because when it comes time for me to sew this shut, it just be, then it becomes easier for me to fold this and have a better result. Not a huge deal, but it does make it a little bit easier and a nicer effect. What I tend to do now is I'll start to stuff with my fiber fill and I'll do a little bit of stuffing on the inside and I'll concentrate on the, let me get rid of that. What are you doing up there? Let me not snap myself. I'll concentrate on the corners that I can't get to and I'll put in my first wave will be polyfill. Then I will go ahead and do my beads. The reason why I do that is because I want my beads to kind of, in a way, be between two layers of polyfill. I don't necessarily want to feel the polyfill or the poly beads. I just want the weight of the beads or the rice or the beans. Go ahead and start stuffing. Not a ton. You're going to finally stuff it with more later. And I'll concentrate on areas that I can't get to after a while. Because once I start throwing poly beads in there, this little corner here, I can't get to it anymore. So stuff this one, stuff this corner real well and stuff these. Do a little bit of stuffing. And then when I come back, we're gonna go ahead and put our beads in. I've done a preliminary, a preliminary uh, layer of stuffing, concentrating on trying to fill out this corner right in here, these corners, and just try to get enough wadding in there that I don't see my or feel my beads right away. I've got my beads here. How much is that? I don't know, maybe a third of a cup of beads because they're heavier weight. They tend to work well. What is this measuring thing? This is actually off of my one of my uh, laundry detergent caps. So that kind of came in handy. Then I'll use a funnel and pour it in and then just go ahead and start to shake it around and get those beads to go on the inside. And do that until you use them all. Remember, this is not a doorstop. This is not something that's really, really heavy. This is just structurally enough to hold an iPhone or a phone and a tablet. Okay, I've put in my container of beads. Hopefully most of them haven't wound up all over my sewing room. And now I'll go ahead and hold this a little bit to get these things distributed. Now I'll go back and finish, because I've got some room in here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish with more fiber fill. If you put your beads in, let's say you've stuffed this thing to the rim and with fiber fill and then you decided to put your beads in, what the problem is your beads are everywhere. So at least this way, your beads are in there, but they're protected by two layers of fiber fill. Okay, I'm just about done. Let me be stuff to within an inch of its life. It just needs to be stuffed enough. Good. Nice. Yeah, I will hold a phone. All right, now what you're going to do, and I, I can show you what I mean, but you're going to go ahead, pull those together, and you're going to have to do what's called, not necessarily a whip stitch, but the stitch that I tend to use that works well is a, it's a, it's a, stitch that is used quite a bit with uh, quilting. It's a flat fill stitch. And what it does is it gives you a better, 
a little bit less visual, you know, not just a big bulky thing. It gives you a nicer stitch. I want to give myself enough enough thread to be so this is very solid. So this is actually four threads of four strands of thread. And I'll go ahead and make my knot in my thread. Okay. So that's a pretty substantial, nice big thick thread. And now I'll go ahead and start to show you how I do this. What I've done here is just to kind of keep this together, because this is pretty actually pretty full, is I've gone ahead and pinned my raw edges together. Uh, one of them is laying on the inside, one of them is folded like I told you. And then I'll go ahead and put my thread through. And because I have a knot, I'll go ahead and put it through about here. Get that knot to die on the inside. Then what I like to do, I'm gonna go ahead and come this way. What I like to do is just do a little bit Oops. So you don't see that very well. But what I want to do, and I know this is hard to see, is what I want to do is do a little bit of a tack here. Because even though I backstitched when I did this opening, I want to make sure that this stays. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that flat fell, which is you come on this is the folded fabric. This top piece is the folded. This is the one that's laying straight. Little bitty stitches, but I'm going to come up and just prick that fold. Okay. Come here. And just catch that fold. So I've just caught that fold. What you'll get is you'll just get a very small little stitch here. It's prettier than a whip stitch. Here, and just catch the fold. Most of you guys know already how to do this, so you can get off the video. I'm going to go ahead and finish up here, and then we'll see the final result. This is why it's really important to go ahead and shape flex that leading edge, because if you don't shape flex it, um, it won't be as stable, and it'll you're going to have problems on this seam, and I don't want any problems on this seam. And go ahead and finish that up. And at the top, at the, at the very top, right about here, I'm sorry, right about here, I'm going to do a couple uh, stop stitches, and then we're done. To finish that top, we're going to go ahead and do a couple stitches so that this doesn't come open. Let me show you a nice way to finish this. Okay, so you've got your loop here, right? This is, Pam Howard does this in her videos. Go through once, go through a second time, pull, and now you've got a really nice knot. That knot isn't really going anywhere. And then to kill the knot, go ahead and go through and clip. Come on. So you can't see where your knot is. And it's not too terrible looking. It's not great looking, but it's not awful. And that's your bag. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoy making these. These were really uh, well received by my girlfriends. They all wanted one. And then everybody wants one. Kids want them because they're so good about using their iPhones and their tablets. But this is actually a very nice idea. Great with a craft show. I think these would sell real well during a craft show. But thank you so much. And I really hope you have a great day. And this is Trish with Peregrine Designs. Bye-bye.